This is a revision video PowerPoint for uh, Unit B603 GCSE revision for medical ethics and this is going to cover the topics of euthanasia and abortion. Firstly, euthanasia comes from the Greek word meaning good death. You've got to get the definition right and you've got to be able to explain it. The other idea of euthanasia is the act of something called mercy killing um, and usually it's of someone who is either very ill or even very old So, they d and the primary purpose is they do not suffer anymore and they get to die with dignity. I'm going to look at just these two different types, there are more. There's passive euthanasia, this is not illegal and it's where someone is kept alive on a life support machine. If they're being kept alive on a life support machine, it means that they actually cannot live themselves, and it's the machine that's keeping them alive. So if you're turning that off, you're not actually ending their life. It's that there's no function in the body or brain that's actually able to keep them alive. It's just the machine, the technology. However, active euthanasia is where you actively cut short and help end the life of someone. Uh, for example, if you give them pills, or you suffocate someone, um, basically you are participating in the ending of the life of a person. This is currently illegal in the UK, maximum punishment of 14 years in prison. However, there are places in Europe it's not illegal and there's always a big debate about whether euthanasia should be legalised or not. When it comes to euthanasia there are a number of reasons for and against some people are very passionate, in fact a number of people are passionate on both sides. They think that you should not be able to do it because uh, people uh, might die as a result of feeling that they no longer uh, deserve to live or they can be pressurised into ending their own lives as well. Whereas others think that it's my body, I should choose to die with dignity rather than left to suffer um, over a long period of time. So there are, you need to make sure that you are aware of all the issues and debates for and against and be able to explain and discuss the pros and cons of euthanasia and why people are either for or against it. A big key question in the euthanasia debate is this phrase, the quality of life. And the phrase, the quality of life, means the idea that you can no longer live your life as fully as you once did. For example, your experience of life is poor. You were once very active, and now you're in pain and cannot get out of bed at all. Now for some people, this is not a problem, although it's a difficulty, they can continue to live. But for others who were once very active, they may feel that their quality of life has diminished so much that at this point, some people would suggest you should be able to decide to end your own life. So the idea of the quality of life and what quality of life you have leads some to suggest that if it's poor they should be able to end their own lives. So most Christians are anti-euthanasia. Uh, some people think it's selfish, um, it doesn't consider the members of the family but left behind um, and any person no matter how we all can still be loved and live a a meaningful existence. Secondly, it violates an important theme within Christianity which is the sanctity of life, the idea that all life is sacred and unique and precious and should not be ended because everyone's made in the image of God. Christians believe that only God should decide when life begins and ends and not a doctor or technology and it violates the commandment in the Old Testament that says thou shalt not kill, that life should not be ended. Also, religious and non-religious people would suggest that we have a responsibility as everyone's created in the image of God to protect the weak and most vulnerable members of our society and by keeping euthanasia illegal we will be able to do that. One issue in the euthanasia debate is something called the double effect and it's basically when you do something morally good but unfortunately has a bad side effect to do it. However, the bad side effect wasn't actually intended, and that's even true if you foresaw the effect that would happen. So, within Christianity, for example, if you give someone strong pain relief in the hospital, and <coughs> it may
may well be that that pain relief ends up killing the person or you're unsure whether it's the pain relief or the um, uh, the actual illness then actually you weren't trying to kill the person you're intending to help them and trying to keep them out of pain this is called the double effect and it is not seen as a bad thing from a religious point of view as you were trying to keep the person out of pain Dame Cicely Saunders was a Christian who created something called a hospice and these places now are known up and down the country uh, and they are alternatives to euthanasia they are places where terminally ill people go to die and they offer a compassionate environment in which pain relief is used family and friends can visit this place and strong drugs are given to manage the pain so this would be seen as the uh, most viable alternative to euthanasia and the most compassionate way people can end their lives from a Christian point of view there are some Christians who would be actually in favour of euthanasia because they might even use some quotes like love thy neighbour and the story of the good Samaritan because those quotes suggest that people should be helped and cared for and actually helping someone in need if they're suffering uh, by helping them to die is correct as you're helping someone who's in a situation that wants to suffer no more again it could be seen as the most loving thing to do um, sometimes modern technology can keep people living longer even drugs can keep people living longer than naturally maybe they would have so you could argue that certain things are keeping people alive unnaturally and could be then considered to be against the will of God so not everyone thinks the same thing about euthanasia even from a religious point of view so let's go on to abortion and abortion is obviously where you end a pregnancy before full term or the termination of a pregnancy before full term so abortion happens for a variety of reasons there's not just one reason it could be for example of rape it could be that the person is too young it could be that the mother's life is in danger it could be the fact they simply don't want a child it could be for other mental health reasons there are other reasons as well here are just four to get you thinking about whether or not the abortion could be right and wrong in those situations and you need to think of why it might or might not be wrong in those situations but they're the reasons why so some key words the sanctity of life is really key in this discussion because from a religious point of view it's the idea that all human life is sacred and unique and made in the image of God an embryo um, you've got to use the right phrases within this rather than talking about babies and an embryo is a human life in its early stages very early stages the cell stage fetus is when the embryo has moved on and it started to develop um, organs and other things that start to recognize it as what we know as a human being and conception which is the idea that the sperm and egg meet and that that embryo is formed that is known as conception so key questions are in the discussion is when does life begin there are a number of different points here but there is no defined point at which everyone agrees that life starts and that's where the whole abortion debate discussion is so vehement on both sides for some people but they believe that as soon as the sperm and egg uh, fertilize get fertilized the sperm fertilizes the egg that that is when life begins and if you're a religious person you may think that Roman Catholics think that and that's when they think life begins you may believe that life begins when the heart starts beating or actually you may agree with the law that the abortion limit is 24 weeks which suggests that before this time the fetus is not a human life because by the law courts you could actually end it before that so there is not one agreed point in which life begins and you're going to have to think about uh, what you think about when life begins but also be aware of what other people think as well so that you can have a discussion about um, the differences to do with abortion linked when life begins 
So what are the different Christian attitudes to, bo to abortion? Well, you've got two camps. You've got the pro-life Christians who disagree with abortion, except, obviously, when the mother's life is in danger. They may protest. They may try and get the law changed about abortion because they think it's simply killing a life. And a quote that could be used in this is from the Old Testament. There was a suggestion here in this quote that obviously God knows every single human life, even before they're formed. So every human life should have the opportunity to live. The phrase double effect comes into the abortion because it's the idea that abortion can be carried out if the mother's life is in danger. And Roman Catholics allow abortion in these circumstances, and it's the very few circumstances that they allow abortion. So, most obviously, uh, pro-life Christians think that abortion is killing and breaks the commandment not to kill. It goes against the sanctity of life, that life should be treasured and preserved and not ended. Jesus taught the importance of loving thy neighbour and the unborn and defenceless neighbour, from their point of view, the fetus or the potential life. So killing a baby or killing a fetus is not loving it, and adoption could be an alternative to abortion in this debate. Also, because God knows us and plans us, as we saw in that quote, that actually, even at conception, that human life has already begun. The idea that doctors are playing God and God is the one who gives life is also another key point within disagreeing with abortion. However, there are some Christians that are pro-choice, and pro-choice means that it should be the woman's right to choose. And this is a really key discussion in the abortion debate. So, it does not break the commandment thou shall not kill, nor does it go against the sanctity of life because actually they believe a fetus or embryo, early cells, is not a human life. It's just a set of cells with a potential to become human. And also Jesus taught the importance of loving one's neighbour and a woman who wants an abortion, who believes that that's the best for her, is it's not very loving if you go against that or you force your view upon them. It's not seen as the most loving thing to do. Obviously, you have the idea that to save the life of the mother, abortion is um, acceptable. And if it's going to cause the mother unnecessary mental pain, um, it could be seen as the right thing to do or born with a serious mental or health issue which would affect its quality of life. You could argue that doctors are doing God's will, making sure the children are wanted and loved. Again, Christians believe in love, so the idea there that they're doing God's will, um, again at that early stage in embryo, believe that life is not a life yet. So you could argue that um, doctors could be doing the will of God by protecting um, uh, life and doing the best thing by the mother. There are some key questions here that you need to look at and actually remember, and we have answers to these, so you're going to need to know the answers to the questions and be able to have a good discussion about the variety of things linked to abortion.